Uh, we introduced this morning called the Residential Mortgage Market Privatization and Standardization Act. Uh, I just want to speak briefly on this bill that deals with uh, a pressing issue that I know the Senator from Arizona, probably as much as anybody in the Senate, has spoken about and has championed for, for many, many years. The current dynamic permanent conservatorship is not sustainable with uh, Fannie and Freddie and the GSEs as they are today. There's been a lot of discussion recently about uh, various things that are happening with these organizations. The FHFA, which actually regulates uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, is begging Congress for direction, but in their words, is only getting mixed signals. So today we've introduced a bill to really give a very clear direction as to what ought to happen to these major GSEs. Uh, both of them uh, t together, sit a together they sit atop five trillion in obligations plus hundreds of thousands of REO properties. In other words, properties uh, that they've taken back and are now overseeing throughout America. With a $5 trillion book, any mistake that they make is very expensive and obviously the taxpayers of this country uh, know full well that uh, billions and billions of dollars continue to flow in these organizations uh, to keep them afloat. And yet, these organizations today are lame duck organizations with no clear guidance on their future. Um, they really have no idea uh, what the future holds. The organizations themselves basically are treading water. Over the most recent decade, Fannie and Freddie became in part corporate welfare schemes for mortgage banks. There's no question that what was happening is the governor's balance sheet uh, was helping uh, fund corporate welfare programs where basically mortgage brokers could, uh, could sell off to Fannie and Freddie mortgages that they had put in place and have them guaranteed. As they raced to the bottom to lower guarantee fees so they could take a bigger market share for the biggest mortgage originators, they actually helped fuel the housing bubble that has led us where we are today. Uh, there's no question about it. So many people talk about Fannie and Freddie and say that without them, um, we wouldn't have affordability in housing. Well, at the end of the day, Fannie and Freddie don't make housing more affordable. What they do is they simply make interest rates too low what that actually does is push up home prices. I mean, that's the exact equation that occurs in this process. Housing affordability is determined by your mortgage, monthly mortgage payment. Fannie and Freddie make interest rates cheap, but the price of housing ends up being more expensive as a result of that. So, in effect, uh, the taxpayer is suddenly on the hook for losses when these, ho when these housing prices are pushed up and the fact is that we end up have, having a bubble like we've had. The market can and will take over the functions of mortgage credit, mortgage credit risk if we make the transition in, in an intelligent way, and that's what this bill does. Our plan phases out Fannie and Freddie over 10 years, but it does so in a way that allows for feedback, feedback from the markets, gradually reducing the guarantee share of new mortgage-backed securities allows us to see where the market price, where the market's price credit risk. We also add transparency to the market by making the valuable data at the GSEs publicly available. One of the things that's happened in both Fannie and Freddie through the years is that they have developed, obviously, more expertise than any entities in the country because they, in essence, have been uh, almost monopolies in this process. And so what we'd like to do is make that data publicly available to folks who will be doing this on the private side. Uniform documents managing the servicing process will give investors and homeowners alike certainty in how they will be treated by their servicer. This is part of the plumbing of a system that needs to be addressed, and our plan does that. In other words, this plan not only phases down Fannie and Freddie over a 10-year period, through a process that gives market signals so we can understand what's happening in the marketplace as this is occurring, but it also creates a mechanism for private investors to come back into the market. Ten years from now, under our plan, we will have a housing finance system based more on market fundamentals, free of taxpayer risk, and more able to price credit appropriately. 
The idea that the private market cannot price credit risk is a total red herring. The biggest risk in a 30-year fixed rate mortgage is the prepayment risk. This is called convexity in bond market parlance. The private market has already figured this out. Uh, we have homeowners throughout our country that constantly prepay mortgages, and the market has figured out a way to price this. So private lenders can and will price credit risk. We just have to be accustomed. We just have this, we've been very accustomed to the government selling this too cheaply, but the market can easily price this. All we need to do is put those mechanisms in place that allow the private sector to be able to do that. It's time to move beyond Fannie and Freddie. We cannot pretend this problem away. Our plan is thoughtful, and it will earn back private capital over time. So, Mr. President, uh, we've offered a piece of legislation that we think is something that can receive bipartisan support. It allows Fannie and Freddie to be phased out over time. It allows us to see market signals as this is occurring. It allows, and you and I know I've worked on this and looked at these things in the banking committee itself, it allows us to actually put in place those mechanisms that will allow the private sector to come in and backfill as the guarantee continues to diminish over time. Mr. President, I'm offering this bill, uh, hopefully, to be a marker. If people want to change and talk with us about things that they think might enhance this bill, we're open to that. But we really believe at this time, a year after, a uh, uh, year and a half after Dodd-Frank has passed, that it's time for us to actually begin looking at a real way to phase down Fannie and Freddie's involvement in the marketplace. And I hope that Republicans and Democrats will join in with us uh, try to make this be bill better if they'd like to do that, but certainly move us in a direction of doing something that is thoughtful and will move us along towards the private market, market and residential uh, finance.